Yes, if you don't mind me asking you, why are you wearing an apron? We are doing a book review here. I'm doing a book review along with you, Radhi. I agree to that. But I'm also cooking at the same time. Can't you get all those, you know, really delicious sort of aromas that are wafting in from the kitchen? I am, I am. And they're quite distracting. May I know what's cooking? <laughs> distracting. But I am making my world famous in Mumbai. World famous in Mumbai, no? Right? Kadai dosh. Wow, I hope you're going to save some for me. You're for definitely later. going to go get, you know, your co-reviewer's Thank portion. You. Anyway, back to the review now. Of late, Booknook, on Booknook, Radhi and I decided that, you know, we're going to take a call and focus on Indian authors and Indian writing. Little did I realize that one cannot review Indian writing and give Chetan Bhagat a miss. Yes. Let's face it, Chetan Bhagat is not a favorite in literary circles and of critics, but he's certainly favored by a large section of the population in middle class B1 and B2 towns who look for an effortless read with a simple language and plot. I must confess though, you know, I was a Chetan Bhagat virgin, never having read any of his books. And it took this review and 400 days, mm. you know, for me to lose my Chetan Bhagat virginity. Yeah, it's just stop being such a drama queen. I'm not being a drama queen, you know. Do you know how much hype and excitement the release of a Chetan Bhagat book, you know, sort of generates? Yeah. It reminds me of those, you know, lines from Hamlet that are immortal. Yes, lives but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon, upon the stage. stage. And, and then, then is heard, heard no more. more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying absolutely nothing. nothing. However, for the book industry in India, Chetan Bhagat is the big cheese. You know, he's the sort of the patty in the burger. After all, who doesn't like an author whose books sell almost as soon as they're released? No, you know, actually sometimes even before. Mm. So I fell in line, I bowed my head, you know, before Mammon and sat down to read 400 days with absolutely zero expectation. Mm. After all, if you have no expectations, then you're very unlikely to be disappointed. Good strategy. You? Good strategy. So why the hype and hoopla? I think the formula of a book written in a language no one will struggle with about ordinary characters with some cultural stereotypes thrown in seems to be some of the key ingredients in CB's formula. CB? Did you just refer to Chetan Bhagat as CB? Yeah. Just when I thought, you know, my day could not get any worse. Yes, yes, yes. C let's focus. Let's focus. Let's talk, about, let's talk about the plot. What plot? It's a plot. Ah, okay. There, there's a plot, right. So there's Alia Arora, who's half Rajasthani and half Malayali, two states, is married to Manish Arora, who's the younger son of a well-heeled Punjabi family, three states. The marriage is the equivalent of shotgun wedding, since Alia was pregnant, which much the horror of the prospective mother-in-law. Here CB, you know, really wheels out the big guns of tropes, you know, the Overweight Punjabi matriarch, she's dripping diamond, sarcasm, spite and venom at her daughter-in-law who does not fit the traditional mold. Yeah. So we have introduced the Aroras. Yes. Now it's time to introduce the Rajpurohits. Papa Rajpurohit, Mama Rajpurohit and Baba Rajpurohit whose name is Kesha. There's also a Dost Rajpurohit who lives with the RP clan. His name is Sora. So we have CB, we have RP. Anyway, Kesha is studying for the IPS. Can someone please tell CB that you study for the civil service and not a particular service? Anyway, enough digression. Kesha is an IIT graduate, quite like old CB, and is by his own admission a disappointment to everyone around him. While studying for his civil service examinations, Kesha also partners with Saurav in a detective agency. Thus, the paths of the Aroras and the Rajpurohits converge when Alia approaches Papa RP and Mama RP, inquiring about Baba RP. The parents go, you know, absolutely delirious with joy as they think Alia is showing a romantic interest in Baba RP. Yeah. Poor chaps, their joy is brutally short lived. All Alia wants is to hire the services of Baba RP to find her daughter, Sia, who's been missing for nearly nine months. After a lot of initial effort, the Gurugram police has called it a cold case and has set out to tackle more solvable crimes. The police investigation is full of the usual drama regarding the suspects, the questioning, the family squabbles and the never-ending media circles. Baba Arpi, meet Alia Arora. Kesha and Saurabh get into the thick of things. Calling favours and reopening the closed case files, they latch on to a previously undiscovered thread. The plot thickens and in the meanwhile we see chemistry between Alia and Kesha, which sees them end up in bed. Hmm. The chemistry is, you know, explained by Saurav through the analogy of potassium and water, 
both pretty you know inert and harmless by themselves but put them together and boom they kind of explode you know the merits of an iit education are so apparent for everyone to see yeah 400 days like all other chetan bhagat books is full of characters who are developed superficially i'm sorry tropes abound and run right throughout the book the classic wishes mother in law mil the philandering husband the fat friend bhagat packs them all in Yeah, but unfortunately, unlike potassium and water, these characters do not explode. You know, they sort of fizzle about on the page or pages. Almost 400 of them. Yes, the plot lacks enough twist to grasp the reader, and anyone who reads thrillers can pretty much guess who the abductor is, which makes the climax mediocre. At no point did I feel there was a "my heart is hung on a hook" kind of a mystery. The writing style is simple. The humor is banal. The book, like most of his books, is written in a way that can be adapted very easily to screen, mm. which means mm. that we can expect an extremely predictable and tacky movie with Punjabi and you know South Indian tropes thrown in. Mm. Incidentally, Alia's Malayali mother is stereotypically referred to in the book as Madrasi. Mm. I can visualize the actors, the gana bajana. already and you know i can also visualize the fact that i am never going to watch that movie nor am i and i wish you had to said that about the book too <laughs> anyway all is well that ends well because i had to read the book me too but for chetan bhagat or cb fans the book has everything that can be expected you know a simple writing style familiar enough tropes enough hostile humor a love interest and a plot that does not strain the mind 400 days is never meant to be a serious read It's meant to be a light read to be had with a chai and pakoras or maybe a train journey. I do have one bone to pick with Mr. Bhagat. You know? Bukhara, the iconic restaurant in Delhi's Maurya Sheraton. Bhai, it does not serve butter chicken. It really? does not. No, no, it doesn't. Overall, I think. Oh my God. Overall, I think all considered, I would rate the book two and a half stars. Rathi, I have an honest confession to make. I picked up the book with some trepidation and no expectations, right? However, at the end of it, the overall experience was not too bad. It was a bit like you know, murmura before it becomes jhal muri. Nothing stands out, but nothing terrible either. Hmm. Would I read another CB book if I was on a stranded on an island with no other book available for sure? But in normal circumstances, most likely not. So, what's your rating, yes? My rating for this book would be two stars. Hmm, quite like two states. Yeah, and I think you know when it comes to Chetan Bhagat or CB. The Beatles sang it best, you know. There will be an answer. Let it be. Let, let it, it be, be. Let it be. Yes, I have to agree with you, musical and all in this time. My analogies, unlike CB, mostly hit the spot, Radhi. Next week, you are off to Kochi on a well-deserved break, so yes. we will also take a break from, you know, book nook shots. We'll try to record via Zoom, but you may have to manage with Yats on his own until that time. So good luck with that. Oh yes, good luck with that. If you love Book Nook, show us some love and like and subscribe to our channel by clicking on the bell icon below. So see you all from Kochi, hopefully. Radhi, you're setting off for God's own country. Hmm. Are you planning to sort of, you know, celebrate Onam there? Ah, uh, in the ninety? Oh no, heaven forbid. <laughs> But you can catch our review of Anjana Menon's Onam in a Nighty by clicking on a link in the description box below. So see you all soon. Bye. Stay safe. Safe travels, Ravi. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.